So here we go, guys. Today we are talking about the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So converse means sort of like opposite or inverse. It's basically working the Pythagorean sort of backwards. So that means we should start by just reviewing what the Pythagorean theorem states, which is if you have a right triangle, has to be a right triangle, has to have a right 90 degree angle in it, then the uh, square of the legs, uh, the sum of the squares of the legs, so that's what we've got right here, leg squared plus leg squared, it will equal the area of the hypotenuse square, so the hypotenuse square. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And so working backwards means if we have a triangle, but we're not sure if it's actually a right triangle. We don't have angle measurements. We don't have the little square in the corner to indicate a right angle. We could work backwards. So the converse of the Pythagorean theorem says, if you uh, take your three sides and you assume that the longest side is a hypotenuse, if the sum of the squares of the two short sides actually equal the square of the longest side, then there must be a right angle involved, and so your triangle has to be a right triangle. So let's see that in action. So here we have a triangle. We don't know if it's a right triangle. This looks like it could be 90 degrees, but maybe it's 91 degrees, or maybe it's 89 degrees. So how do we know if this triangle is a right triangle? So we're going to set it up where we assume the two shorter sides are the legs and we assume that the longest side is the hypotenuse. We don't know, maybe it's not a hypotenuse because maybe this is not a right triangle, but we just sort of assume that it is. Okay, so here we go, we're going to set it up. Our two short sides would be 8 and 11, so they're going to go in the leg positions and we assume the 13 is the hypotenuse. And we don't know if they're equal. That's what we're going to check. So we evaluate. Uh, we get 64 uh, squared equaling a, plus 121 squared. And 13 squared is 169. So now we're going to look and see. We're going to add these two guys together. When we add them together, we get 184. It is not equal to 169. So this is actually not a right triangle. Since the sum of the two smaller, sh uh, shorter side squares do not equal the long side square, this cannot be a right triangle, and that's what the converse of the Pythagorean, state, Pythagorean theorem states. So let's look at another example. So here in this triangle, is this actually a right triangle? So we are going to take our two short sides, 5 and 7, as legs. We assume the longest side, 10, would be a hypotenuse. And now we evaluate and see if these two add together are actually equal to the other side squared. So we have 25 plus 49. This side would be 100. Let's add the 25 and the 49 together. We get 74. So no, these are not, these squares are not equal to the longest side squared. So this is not a right triangle. Since the sum of the two shorter side squares do not equal the long side square, the triangle cannot, is not, a right triangle. Let's look at another example. So over here we have our triangle. This has an irrational length, but we're still going to use it. So uh, here it might get, with a picture, it seems like maybe the 9 is the longest side. So if you're ever not sure, you could always just think about what this would be uh, as a root. 9 would be the square root of 81. So that is the longest side, because this is the square root of 45, square root of 81, this would be the square root of 36. But 9 is then the longest side. So let's plug these in. Short sides, longest side in the hypotenuse position, and we calculate. 6 times 6 is 36. The square root of 45 squared, remember that a root, a second root, and a second power cancel each other out, so it leaves us with the radicand of 45, and 9 squared is 81. Add these together, and yes, we get 81 equaling 81. So this, uh, since the sum of the two shorter side squares do equal the long side square, the triangle must be a right triangle, which means that this angle right here 
must be 90 degrees. Sometimes you're not given a picture. In this case, we just make sure that we have the longest side would be in the hypotenuse position. So here I'm going to set it up. We'd have a 3 squared plus a 4 squared. And we're going to compare that to the longest side squared. So we would get 9 plus 16. Over here we get 25. 9 plus 16 is 25. The two values are actually equal. So this is a yes. This is a right triangle. Looking over here on this side, again, make sure that you find your longest side. That's going to go in the hypotenuse position. So I've got a 5 squared plus a 7 squared, comparing that to an 8 squared. We would get 25 plus 49. Over here, we're going to get 64. These add up to 74. So in this case, these two things are not equal. So this would be no. This is not a right triangle. So that's how it would look if you were doing it without a picture. Just make sure you find your longest side in the hypotenuse position, longest side in the hypotenuse position. So that's it. That's what the converse of the Pythagorean theorem does. It's a way to uh, determine if a triangle is a right triangle without even seeing it as long as you have the three side lengths.